Economists like to think of any societal change or new technology in terms of economic cost. If you can identify the core economic cost behind a new technology, think about AI, think about blockchain, or any other sort of new innovation, then it becomes much easier from an economic lens to predict and understand what will it make a difference, what will it be more transformative versus less. This was around 2016 when we started looking at uh, blockchain technologies and cryptocurrencies with my co-author Josh Rogans at the University of Toronto. One thing that was clear to us was that you know this was as much about economics as it was about cryptography and distributed systems. When you have information that's already digital and it's on a distributed system on a blockchain, verifying that it's actually true and accurate it's almost costless. But of course, many of the systems that we rely on every day incur what we call last mile frictions. At the interface between the online world and the offline one, you have to keep those records in sync. Think about the role that identity or the identity of an individual, of an institution plays in securing that when you're transacting online, you can trust that other counterparty. So one of the limitations of blockchain is that at that interface between the offline world and the online one, we do really need a set of complementary innovation. It could be an IoT device that maybe tracks GPS location of a package or any sort of other offline attribute. If you can record that and port it online with trust, then of course, there's a lot more that you can do with digital verification. Reduction in the cost of verification will lead to cheaper, faster, more efficient settlement of transactions. You know, you can start with things like cross-border remittances, but also start thinking about the settlement and reconciliation of much more advanced financial assets and financial contracts. Why does the cost of networking matter? Because it really relates to what often people talk about, the role of intermediaries. Often the conclusion is that intermediaries are not needed in a blockchain-based ecosystem, but really blockchain is about changing the nature and the role of what intermediary is doing. The cost of networking relates to the new ability to reward the good kind of activity that you want in that ecosystem and actually trying to disencourage the bad types. This is where market design, incentives, and overall rules of how this digital economy works uh, become very important. And when you think about systems that are, for example, based on proof of work, those systems you know, rely on rewarding participants for providing mining and computational capacity to the network to secure it. At a high level, as the cost of networking is lowered, what you can do is really build shared infrastructure. Think of this like as a public utility, a public layer that everybody can build on and no single entity can control. By encoding those rules into the blockchain and into its operations, into its governance, you also ensure that you know, that structure can survive over the long run and multiple participants can really benefit from the network's growth. What's interesting is that you can start blending governance form uh, between firms and, and pure markets. So you have some of the features and the governance structures and rules and incentives that you would typically only see within a corporation or within a public institution. And you can blend those with some of the high-powered incentives of traditional pure markets. I think an interesting aspect is that, you know, the crisis has also surfaced some of the frictions that we see in the current system. You know, when you think about uh, getting cash in the hands of citizens, when you're trying to deploy an effective stimulus plan, sometimes we still rely on legacy infrastructure and things like checks. So it's clear that blockchain technology, I think, can bring a lot to improving and updating our payment infrastructure, reducing fragmentation in payment systems. And that's just one example.